So I'm sure by now you guys have seen the opening ceremony of the Olympics in Paris. But the question is, were you offended? What we saw was that, in fact, when you're seeing these displays, you guys, and of course, this blue character right here is supposed to be not Papa Smurf, right? Where a lot of people are joking about saying that it is, but it's supposed to be a character, uh, the Greek god Dionysus, at this feast table representing, you know, gastronomy said in France. This is coming from the creative director who says that he was not inspired by Da Vinci's famous painting of the Lord's Supper. And that picture is here. You could see here's uh, below is the famous depiction of Jesus with his 12 disciples. And notice the similarity here. And this is supposed to be where a bunch of drag queens and transgender people were dancing on this, on this runway, on this stage. And people are saying a lot of, not just Christians and, and Catholics, but a lot of other people who don't even claim to be Christian or Catholic are saying this is definitely a mockery of not just the painting itself that da Vinci painted, but of Christianity directly. It wasn't just insulting, but it was a mockery. Now, of course, they've come out and said it wasn't, but if you if you take a look, you guys, of this depiction, and you're having Dionysus here, and you're having these characters in the background who are drag queens, and you're this is the opening of France. They decided to have this, and you have a child here in the center. Remember, they're talking about this as being inclusive, and diversity that you love whoever you want to love and you have men who think that they're women or dress like women and they're dancing around and there's a child in the middle and they're saying this is look at this they're saying this is diversity and john quinn says the 2024 paris world olympic games is under backlash for allowing children to dance with drag queens in front of over 1 billion people and this is what they wanted to put on display. And here's the other thing. When you actually look at this painting and they're saying, oh, that was not the inspiration. If you look at the elements that night as I watched, and I've, of course, have seen other coverage and other people who've looked at it as well. You guys, they were inspired by the art that is on full display in France. Okay. And so you think that you're going to miss out on using one of the most famous iconic paintings in the world by Leonardo da Vinci himself of Jesus and his 12 disciples and not implement that in your ceremony? Of course they did. And this is what they came up with. This rendition, which is a total mockery, replacing Jewish men who are followers of Jesus Christ, who's about to give his life, you know, for us, for our sins. The night before he was in the course, the night he was betrayed. And then later that following morning, he was he was crucified and you, and you replace it with a bunch of drag queens and a transgender person with a child here at the center. Now, because of the backlash, listen to what the communications director came out to say following the backlash. Clearly, there was never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. Uh, on the contrary, uh, I think that Majorly really tried to uh, really intend to, to celebrate community tolerance to celebrate community and look at how they celebrated it with a bunch of drag queens. That was uh, his word yesterday. And uh, looking at the result of the polls that we shared, uh, we believe that this ambition was, uh, was achieved. If people uh, have taken any offense, uh, we are, of course, really, really sorry. Now, this is the, the, the creative director who came up with the opening ceremony. Now, this is an openly gay queer guy. And he didn't. He says my intent was not to to subvert or, or to mock or to shock in any which way, shape, or form. Uh, but the reality is, when you actually look at this here, um, you did. And it says here the Paris Olympics is under fire in, in for including a child in their hyper sexualized, blasphemous rendition of the Last Supper. An apparent child could be seen joining the drag queens. During the performance, instead of bringing people together, the planners of the event apparently wanted to mock the religion of 2.4 billion people, okay? And so you be the judge if you think this is a mockery or if this isn't. But take a listen to what Sky News here in Australia had to say about the ceremony. It's, it's always the Christians, Evelyn, who, who come under attack in this one because they know it's an easy target. They don't have to worry too much about what the response is going to be. The response is only going to be... Turn worse. the other cheek. But well, e exactly. Um, but it, it's just pathetic. It is, but I, I think it's 
I, I actually disagree with why. I don't think Christians are an easy target. I think Christians are the biggest target, which is why they always attack Christians because Christianity is the only thing standing between people and the state. Um, because when you have God above government, the government doesn't become God. And I think that's why they constantly tackle it because once you get through the Christians, oh, it's easy to go through everybody else. Like Kel said, we are the number one religion uh, across the world. And just for a bit on France as well, like you mentioned, Joe, I, my blood ancestry would disagree that all French are uh, morons. Really? <laughs> however, <laughs> however, um, I will just say statistically in France, there are over 1,000 attacks, anti-Christian attacks every year. That's an average of about three per day. So this isn't something new for France. We've seen all of the, um, all the damage that they've done to the church across France, the fires that they've been setting mm. in Christian Catholic churches all across um, the country. Um, not only that, you, France has like got the highest terrorist rate in all of Europe currently standing at, I, I, I looked at the statistics, but they're fleeting at the moment, um, but it's higher than any other country. They're, they're honestly a mess. And I think the reason why is because the more that you unravel and reject Christianity, which is what built the West, the more you're going to get this pagan crap shoved in your face. And I'm sorry, I am a Christian. This did offend me. It also offended a lot of people who just want to watch the Olympics because it yeah. unites yes. people Correct. around the world on a common interest of the enjoyment of sport. And not only that, I grew up watching the opening ceremony of the Olympics. I had a family member who was an Olympian. And so it was a very big thing that our whole family would sit around and watch and participate. And we followed my um, family member's career, so to speak. There's a lot of nostalgia. There's a lot of things. There is no way in absolute hell I would let any child in my family go anywhere near the Olympics after what I just saw. And isn't that sad that but what's Evelyn, meant that, to bring that's what everyone... The flag means. That's what the flag means. When a flag is flown upside down it's by... It's distress. Hey. It's distress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So let me just say this, you guys, you know, whatever you decide to do, if you want to say, I'm not watching the Olympics anymore, if you want to just stay and pray for uh, the Olympians and for uh, France, my wife and I know several missionaries in France doing ministry and they need our help. They need our support. There's no question. If you want to uh, say that anybody who does watch this, uh, stuff on TV during the, the two weeks that it's on during the Olympics and they're not supporting Christianity for watching it, whatever take you that you have, let me just show you scripture. Let's just look at what scripture teaches about what we're seeing on display. We shouldn't be so, uh, shocked, by, especially as Christians, when it says, but false prophets also rose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies when denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. The way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words, not just false apologies, not just false words about diversity, inclusion, and community. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. And their destruction is not asleep. We're also reminded in the next chapter that the Apostle Peter lays out. He tells us in the end times, as things continue to get worse, notice what he says that there right here it says in verse 5, for they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God and that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Why? Because of the growing sin that is that is exposed here. The, the, the increase of scoffers were told here. Remember he said that before here in verse three, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. Matter of fact, James even says with the people who are wealthy and boastful and they're ripping people off and they're greedy and the God of this age has blinded them. It says, are they not, James chapter two, verse seven, the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? 
We are not to be surprised when Jesus says, they hated me, they will hate you as well. Or as Peter tells the church, he says, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Notice, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. So here's the thing, you guys. If anyone suffers as a Christian, he says here, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. Now, since this has come out, the ceremony and the backlash, there's been a lot of people who are self-professing, supposedly Christians who have come out in major attack mode, insulting, uh, name-calling, foul language. The Bible does not condone that. Matter of fact, what we should do, again, whatever side you're going to be on, if you're going to boycott the Olympics, if you're going to pull support, whatever it is, that's your conviction between you and the Lord. What I'm just saying is as a Christian, let us rejoice. Let us be glad knowing that we know the Savior and we're no better off than, than the people that we saw in full display, those drag queens. They need a Savior just like we need a Savior. And we need to stand in the gap and we need to pray and intercede. And as I'm praying for the people in France, I know of several friends of mine who are actually there in France sharing the gospel, a team of them, a team of evangelists from Living Waters. And I'm so thankful that they're there and they're not the only ones. So let's pray and support that efforts because it is dark there. There are scoffers there. They are blaspheming the name of the Lord because the God of this age has blinded them. They're dead in their trespasses and sins. And we need to know that when they insult the name of the Lord, we're blessed because the spirit of the glory and of God rests upon us. They can do whatever they want to do. They can take the opportunity on the biggest stage in the world and mock Christianity and come out and say, oh, we, we were not, that was not our intent. We we're all about a community, diversity, inclusion. So even if they weren't mocking Christianity, what they were trying to do, my friends, and what they attempted to do, and they were glad about it, as they quote, they say they looked at the polls, was they wanted to advance trans people, the LGBT community, drag queen people dancing with children. That's what they want to advance. And we have to pray against this and not be afraid of it, not to go back and insult or to revile or to mistreat, but we are blessed because the spirit of the glory and of God rests upon us. The Bible tells us that this is going to happen as we live in the last days. But let us not be discouraged. So I pray that that encourages you guys as we look at what happened at the Olympics. But beyond that, let's take the opportunity, whether we're being prosecuted or persecuted for the name of, of Christ, whether we're being insulted because of the name of Christ, let us rejoice and be glad. Okay? That is the posture, my friends, that I encourage you guys to continue to have as you stand strong in your faith. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe if you have not done so already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.